the title of my presentation is The Network Self, Identity, Community, and Culture on Social Network Sites. And that is also the uh, title of a, of a book volume I'm currently editing. I'll be speaking about social behaviors online and specifically on social network sites. So I'll begin by presenting some general, general research on the area and then I'll tell you a little bit about um, three studies on social network sites, Facebook, uh, mostly, and then um, a third study comparing Facebook, LinkedIn, and the small world. So I'll tell you a little bit about those, the findings from those studies, because those are three studies that we recently wrapped up. Um, so what's, what's the premise of all of this? Why is this important? There's a lot of conversation and discussion about the social impact of social network sites, and frequently it's framed uh, with great existential anxiety. Uh, people want to know, first of all, whether uh, these platforms produce more or less social people, to put it very plainly. Um, interestingly, interestingly enough, media research, and specifically new media research, has shown us that most of the time with a new medium, following an initial displacement effect, where the new medium displaces traditional media habits or um, interpersonal habits, then what eventually happens, then what eventually happens is that uh, the new medium is integrated into the individual's everyday social routines and patterns that are quite healthy um, and, and quite normal. So it's very reasonable to expect that the same thing will happen with social network sites. It's reasonable to expect um, an early stage of excitement and enamorment with a new medium habit, and then to see that new media, uh, new medium habit morph into something that presents part of the individual's everyday media ecology. A more interesting question in my mind has to do with a kind of sense of self that's enabled and promoted and is normalized as self-presentation occurs more frequently in um, environments that are inc increasingly more networked. And that's what I'm referring to with um, the term a networked self. Um, a second question that tends to generate a lot of interest has to do with whether or not these uh, media platforms produce more or less social media. Uh, all media are social. Uh, media foster communication, so by definition, they are social. Media's, uh, media help us connect, so that is a social act, and they also help us disconnect, which also presents a social decision and therefore a social act. Uh, interestingly enough, with the term social media that's used and overused, and in case you could not tell, it's not a term that I'm particularly fond of, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I feel that using the term social media tends to overemphasize the social ability and social potential of a lot of these platforms. And second, I also find that it tends to create the impression that there are media that are social, and then there's a whole other set of media that are anti-social, possibly, or asocial. Um, so I find it much more interesting um, to explore the texture and the tone and the nature and the social landscapes that are created by these platforms and the kinds of variations of social behaviors that flourish on those sites rather than um, get caught up in binary uh, dichotomous discussions of whether something is social or not. And speaking of landscapes, and I'm very excited to have an architect on the panel, uh, a third question that's of interest is to what extent these platforms propose um, social spaces and what kinds, of, um, what kinds of spaces these are and what types of behaviors um, do these spaces afford or um, suggest or make easier. And likewise, what kinds of behaviors do these spaces tend to discourage or complicate? So you'll see that in the three studies that I'll, um, I'll be presenting, uh, most of our assumptions are guided by, the, by, the, by these three questions. 
very quickly to summarize previous research on social network sites, and there's it's been a lot of really interesting work, and there's actually a lot of really interesting research that's presently being conducted. Um, obviously, something that research has shown is that social network sites enable this multimediated sense, uh, this multimediated a way of presenting the self, of introducing the self to the world, involving both audiovisual elements, but also other elements of self-presentation that make the whole game or performance of self-presentation more fun and more entertaining, especially with platforms like Facebook. Uh, this way of introducing the self to the world is obviously mediated and is founded it's based upon the public display of social connections, which is central to the introduction, the mediated introduction of the self to the world. Uh, this is not necessarily a new thing, um, but it does present a primary characteristic of self-presentation online as that presentation takes place on social network sites. Uh, another interesting thing, thing has to do, and also research finding of uh, several states, has to do with the mediation, uh, the electronic mediation of social circles and social status online. So again, um, not something that we've noticed for the first time in studies of the internet, but certainly something that presents a big aspect of how the sense of selfhood is articulated and presented and communicated online. Um, obviously, the privacy and publicity of communication and the, uh, and the ways in which uh, media audiences, media producers, whatever you want to call them these days, uh, the ways in which um, audiences as producers negotiate the private and public boundaries of that self-presentation. Research has also shown that um, social network sites have the capacity to sustain a variety of social connections, both local and remote and also have the ability to sustain a variety of social ties, both strong and weak, with varying consequences and relations to the, to the creation of social capital. Um, if we were to put this very broadly, we could generally say that on social network sites, research has shown that those social have the ability to become more social, and those less social have a, fun a functional alternative. Now, what aspects of all of this did we um, set out to study? I'll be speaking about three different studies. Um, I'll spend a little bit more time discussing the second one um, because it's a newer one and it's kind of more fun and I think it'll be of greater interest to this audience. But I'll speak briefly about the first and thir uh, third studies as well because they, they're all interconnected. So the first study has to do with Facebook use and social capital. And it, um, it has to do with why people use um, Facebook, how, and with what types of um, consequences. Uh, the second study is a, an analysis, a visual analysis of photographs that are posted on Facebook. And the third study is a discourse analysis of the architecture of online place, uh, focusing on three social networks and comparing the different kinds uh, of interaction that the architecture of these three social network sites affords. Starting with the first study, um, um, let me tell you a little bit about what we did. This was a typical uses and gratifications study, meaning that we focused on reasons why people use Facebook. So we had a number of motive categories, and we also asked people questions that were intended to measure their social and psychological predispositions. And then we also uh, had some skills that allow us, uh, allowed us to measure the, the social capital generated on Facebook. So then we were able to conduct some statistical analysis that allowed us to then um, identify and interpret relations between all these different concepts. Um, I'll speak briefly about some of our key findings.